Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, those of you who are joining us via the various social media platforms. We greet you this morning in no other name but the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God he is this morning. Has he wronged you? Has he done you any wrong this morning? But let us just give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Pass is not with us this morning. He is over at Shantimel. And we just want to recognize that this morning. He is ministering there. And we know we just love our pastor, Pastor Dave King. Such an exemplary leader, especially in these times. Hallelujah. We need men like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for him this morning. But if that is mine this morning to speak to us and challenge us this morning. And I want to do so from the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And I purpose this morning to speak to us on the team, a call to worship yonder. I just want us to look to a few verses in the 22nd chapter of Genesis. And it is before us on the screen, verses 1 through 5. Hallelujah. Yonder. Hallelujah. I read as you follow. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And note it carefully. That God did tempt Abraham. Who tempted him? And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, as to rob it in Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I remember as a young boy growing up in Paradise Coco, when we say we're going yonder, there is a place we refer to as yonder. And if you are anybody in the audience from the Coco, most of you will know where I'm talking about. We just say we're going yonder online. But yonder is a place where each and every one of us could have identified with. Nobody had to tell us where is yonder. But yonder was synonymous with some things. When boys arrived yonder, we did boy things yonder. But God also have a place that he called and reserved as yonder. Yonder is a unique place. It's a word we hardly use these days. Probably our English has become much more polished. So we don't hear these words as much as we used to. But I'm certain, I see Bernard smiling in front here, that these are some of the words we would have used. Yonder. And we went yonder as young men and we did all sorts of things over yonder. But God has called Abraham to go yonder. And he's calling us to go yonder. But before we get into the substance of what we want to talk about this morning, 
It is also interesting that Jesus, in that critical hour, he went yonder to pray. So there is something synonymous. And when you look at all the passages of the word yonder in the Bible, it indicates a unique place. And here is God saying to Abraham, as we have read through these five verses, that I want you to go yonder. As though he is saying that I have reserved a place over yonder. Not just here. Because David would have identified with it when David said, there is a higher place to dwell. As though the Christian have a higher realm. There is a place above. There is an exceptional place that God has reserved for each and every one of us. And this morning we are going to call that place yonder. Yonder is synonymous with certain things. It speaks as a place that is a little further. It speaks as though it indicates that you need to press or you need to tarry a little longer to get there. It's not just there, but I want you to go yonder. As though you have to stretch your imagination. Fix your gaze. It's a place that the Lord has resolved. Yonder. And I remember as a young man, we went over yonder and we did all sorts of things yonder. Yonder. But I said to us this morning, and I want you to follow carefully with me as we go through this. Because there is a place and a situation that God has designed for each and every one of us to worship. God set the parameters for our worship. You see, worship is not carnal. Worship is not fleshly. But worship is spiritual. And those that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. So what that is indicating to us is that you and I that set our parameters of worship. You see, you can set your parameter for praise. And you can decide what you are going to give God thanks for this morning. You can decide what you are going to worship or praise God for this morning. Rather, But when it comes to spiritual worship, it is the spirit and the spirit alone that leads us to that place where we can worship God. Abraham could not have found that place. So it is God who designed that place and designed that situation where we are going to offer worship to him this morning. Can I further submit to us? Never be afraid to obey God. Because it is in obedience, worship is perfected. And as we read through the passage, we can also glean from it the things that are not mentioned. Because they are important as those things that are mentioned in that passage. Not the fact this morning that Abraham had no objections. And God just did not say it once. But as we read, I would have identified the fact that God said as though he wants to rub it into Abraham. Offer thy son, thy only son. It would have been sufficient to say, Abraham, I want you to offer your son. But God is rubbing it in. And it seems as though when we go through our trials that, you know, God forsake us and he's not there. But it is God in the midst of our trial rubbing some things in us. Sometimes we feel as when the pain and the situation and all the fears and troubles of this world, that God is not there. But I submit to us from the very verse 1 of the 22nd chapter, the Lord making clear that it is God that is tempting Abraham. It wasn't the devil. The word declares, and it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. Let us pay attention. Worship will cost you something this morning. Worship isn't free. Worship will cost you. And we have the wrong concept of worship. You cannot worship empty handed. You cannot worship empty handed. David knew that. And David said, can I offer something to God that costs me nothing? And that is the character of the man. Because to worship Cannot worship empty handed. And true worship is not emotional. True worship is not fleshly. 
It is spiritual. And it has no regard for the desire of the flesh. We only start worshiping when the flesh is crucified. True worship has nothing to do with the flesh. True worship burns flesh. And that is why so much of us have not reached to the place where we can say, we truly worship the Lord. We truly worship him. The young man who said to Jesus, well, I have done all of these things. As though he was boasting to God. And when God said, I really want you to worship. He could not have worshipped. He walked away broken hearted. Disconsolated. Because the Lord said to him, your worship to me requires you to sell all that you have. So he begs the question this morning. What is worship? What is worship? Because here is Abraham taking his son knowing what the instruction of God is. And he's saying to this young man, we are going yonder to worship. Can you say that this morning? Taking your very last, taking that which is most precious to you this morning and say, I'm going yonder to worship. You see, yonder is not an ordinary place this morning. Yonder is a place of trials and testing. But I'll tell you something about yonder. Because Jesus himself spent 40 nights and 40 days yonder. And so many great ones would have went yonder. But it's only those that worthy of the mantle to be called a true Christian will take the lead to go yonder. So many of us, as Jonathan's son, settled for less, eating the crumbs from the table when the king has prepared a place yonder. What is yonder this morning? We'll talk about it. But what is worship? What is worship? Because we have a misconception of worship. Worship is not singing songs. Worship isn't mere praise or thanksgiving. Worship often requires letting go, giving up, on a denying flesh. Worship costs you. You cannot have a worship experience without bearing a cost this morning. You cannot have a genuine worship experience without giving up and sacrificing something. And I ask the question, what last have you worshipped this morning? What last have you let go of what you call important, significant, and dear to you just for the will of God? Have you worshipped lately this morning? Worship is an act of faith. The faithless cannot worship. It takes faith to worship. It takes faith to go yonder with your only son, knowing that the Lord has required of you to crucify him, but yet saying to you, young man, me and the Lord will return. What manner of man is Abraham? A worshiper is a different kind of person. A worshiper is a faithful person. A worshiper knows that regardless of what is demanded of him, the Lord will make a way for him. If the Lord asks of him to give his only son, thy only son, the son that thou lovest and cares for so much, to crucify him. You are saying to me, Abraham did not understand the concept crucify? You are saying to me that Abraham did not know when he placed that knife in the chest of his son that his son will die? But worship is faith this morning. True worship is an act of faith. Strong concurrence. 7812, Saha is the Hebrew word transliterated worship. And it essentially means to bow, to fall flat, or to pay homage. True worship begins or begins with the will, the flesh being denied, subjected, and God's desire being pursued. Until you have subjected your flesh, you can sing glory, hallelujah, how much times you want. You can shout it from the top of your voice. But you will never have a worship experience until the flesh is denied and say, nevertheless, it's not my will, but thy will be done. What is worship this morning? What is worship? Because the call is to worship. 
And I'm sharing with us this morning because we are living in a time when the church is called to worship yonder, not within the four walls. The call is to worship yonder, worship in the halls of government, worship in the schools, worship on the street corner. Where is yonder this morning? Your worship is not reserved for the house of the Lord, but the call is to worship yonder. Jesus went yonder in the garden of Gethsemane. He went a step further. He pressed and persevered a little harder over yonder. Is the church pressing and persevering to worship yonder this morning? True worship will cost you this morning. It will cost you something. Are you prepared for that this morning? Next slide, please. I'm having a little problem with my projector. The call to go yonder and worship. To go yonder. Yonder. The church has become complacent. To remain right where it is. Not caring about what is over yonder. But God cares about what is yonder. Because when we look all around us, there is a yonder where an altar must be erected in this land of Grenada. It's not just on a Sunday morning from the pulpit. But there is a call to worship over yonder. Sacrifice have to be made yonder. In our schools. In our institutions. In our society as a whole. Yonder requires a prayer this morning. Yonder requires that of us. Yonder is a place of surrender. A place of self-denial. And acceptance of God's desire. Not many Christians desire to go yonder because we are holding on to some things that we are failing and having difficulties in letting go. But I submit to us this morning, church, God knows the place where you will sincerely worship him. And he will get you there. He will get you there. God knows the point where you are going to break and where the flesh is going to tremble and you are going to let go. He knows how to break each and every one of us. He knows and he will get you there. One way or the other. Whether it be on a sick bed. Whether it be through some terrible experience. But God knows the yonder he has prepared for each and every one of us. The question is, can we worship yonder? God knows it. Yonder. Often it is a secluded place. Away from the crowd. Sometimes we get carried away and we say we have a good time. But that wasn't worship. A good time in worship is a place where you are breaking and trembling. It's a place where you are crying and surrendering. What is a true worship experience? A true worship experience is an experience that is transformational. A true worship experience is an experience where you live differently as you came in. With your will broken and the desire and passion to pursue the will and the desire of God remains the priority of your life. Yonder, a place where what you need and what you require or what is required of you is identical. Have you been to such a place this morning where you very need, like the woman at Zarafat this morning, where your very need is what is required of you? And you have a choice to make. And that is why you will decide to worship or not to worship this morning. Abraham needs his son. But the very son he needs is what is required of him this morning. The very last five dollars you have this morning. What you need is what is required. What do you do at that point? Because at that point is where worship begins. Until you get to that point, you have not worship as yet. Worship begins at the point where what you need and what is required are identical this morning. Somebody talk to me this morning. What is it you need this morning? Can you give it up this morning? Because that is where you worship. And that is where you will know who is his and who is of the world this morning. What is your need this morning? Because yonder will cause you to surrender what you need and give it over to somebody else. But can I say to us this morning. That God is faithful. You see yonder. Is the greatest demonstration. Of God's faithfulness. 
So while we are hesitant to get over yonder, yonder is the place that God wants each and every one of us. Over yonder. Because God is not debtor to persons this morning. When you get yonder and you surrender your will, that is where God comes in. God asks Abraham for his son. Because God knew in the future he was going to give his only son. And what God is asking of you this morning, because you already know what he demands of you, is what he wants to bless you with. What he asking of you this morning, while we are hesitant to let it go, is the very door, the very key to your prosperity, your blessing, and your favor in this life. There is a reason I submit to us this morning. Why only a few go yonder. Yonder is not a place where many Christians want to go. Many Christians do not want to go yonder. Many Christians want to remain here and worship. But you cannot worship here only. The children of Israel, they ask the question, how can we worship or how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I submit to them because some of us are asking the question also. So I submit to us this morning. If you cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land, you cannot worship this morning. You cannot worship. Because worship requires you to do some things in a strange place. Yonder is a strange place. The Christians afraid to venture yonder. Go further. There is a reason why so much do not want to go further. Go closer and worship. Because it takes only true worshipers to let go of what they need and let go of their will and surrender everything to God. Yonder is a place of surrender. God did not call Abraham to go anywhere. But he specified, I want you to go yonder where I will show you. And for some reason or the other, if you are not careful, the church is missing yonder. The church is missing yonder. There is a yonder in Grenada that needs to hear the word of God this morning. There is a yonder in this land where an altar must be erected in the name of Jehovah. There is a yonder. He called out to Abraham and he's calling out to his church this morning. I want you to go yonder and preach the gospel. I want you to go yonder and minister the word of God. Because there is some soul yonder that needs to hear the good news this morning. Yonder. Can you worship God yonder this morning? Can you worship God yonder this morning? It is not sufficient to only worship here. Can you worship yonder? Where you are disappointed, dejected and rejected. When the odds are against you, can you still sing a song this morning? Because that is where worship begins this morning. Yonder. Worship do not begin here, but worship begins yonder. Where what you need and what is required are identical. Worship don't begin in your, begins in your comfort zone where everything is okay. You may praise and give thanks in your comfort zone, but true worship begins yonder. When the odds are against you, can you worship there where disappointments is everywhere, where dejection and rejection? Can you sing the Lord's song in a strange land this morning? Yonder, in your sickness, in your pain, hopeless situation. That is where worship begins. Worship begins yonder, not in your comfort zone where everything seems okay and rosy. But worship begins when you are breaking and the odds are against you. Where you lose and it seems like all hope is lost. Worship begins when you feel invincible and you are at the top and everybody is bowing before you. Can you be humble enough? Can you be humble and worship God? Bow before him. Worship begins yonder. Don't tell me you come out and worship God and you have not given anything. Don't tell me you come out and have a good worship experience. Only in your little comfort zone. In your bubble. But I want to hear the person that is on the hospital bed in the pain praising God this morning. I want to hear the person this morning who have the last five dollars but they are going to give God thanks nonetheless this morning. 
Have you been yonder this morning? Have you been yonder this morning? I want to hear the testimony of somebody that has been yonder. Somebody that has to sacrifice what is most precious to them this morning. Somebody who is committed to going yonder this morning. I'm going to give it my all this morning. Yonder. Worship begins yonder. Until you come yonder, you have not had a worship experience. Until you come yonder. And some of you know what I'm talking about this morning. Because you feel as though you are yonder this morning. You are in that place where you are broken. Stretching. Hopeless. But can I encourage you this morning to tarry. Tarry. God always meet those who come over yonder. God always meet those who come over yonder. There is no guarantee that he will meet you in your comfort zone. But I'm guaranteeing you this morning, when you come out of your comfort zone, take that step of faith this morning. You will meet him this morning. Because true worship, he will never deny. He's faithful. But you will only experience his faithfulness yonder this morning. Worshiping yonder is a test of Christian maturity. Worshiping yonder is a test of Christian's maturity. An indication of your growth and love of God this morning. Yonder. Yonder. Where is your yonder this morning? What is it this thing that you are holding on to that God is requiring of you this morning that you cannot let go? Can I submit to you until you let go of that thing this morning? You will never worship God. Because you cannot worship holding on. Worship is an act of surrendering, letting go, relenting all. Nevertheless, it's not my will, but thy will be done. Only yonder, this church and the Christian can make such statement this morning. Have you been yonder lately? Have you been yonder lately? Because it's God who brings his children yonder. It is God who tests Abraham. As we saw in the very first verse of the 22nd chapter. It is God who brings his children yonder. A place where he gets the best of them and gives his best to them. Hold on somebody. Remain in your yonder this morning. Do not give up. Because it's God who have you there. You may think of it as strange. How a loving God could take me to such desolate place. Think about Jesus in the wilderness. Desolate. But the, 90, the 40 days in the wilderness was Jesus is yonder. The time in the garden of Gethsemane was Jesus is yonder. Your sickness, your pain, and your disappointment is your yonder. But from it all, God will get the best of you. God will get the best of you. God will get the best of you this morning. I had my own yonder. And I certain that you have your yonder this morning. I remember it and I don't like talking about it often. But my dear brother is here and my wife is here. I remember when our daughter died and we went to the hospital. We stood there. And I was praying and I heard it clearly. And the Lord asked, what do you prefer, Jimmy? That she is with me or she is with you? And I said right in the midst of our prayer, I caught it, Father, forgive me. That was my yonder. I had to surrender it. Surrender it. And the peace that filled our lives as a family. Some person would have commented and said, well, probably they're glad their daughter died. But they did not understand that God do something yonder. When you come over yonder, it's a different kettle of fish, a different ball game. Because in the midst of the darkest hour, in the midst of the most difficult situation, yonder, yonder is the place of God touching humanity. Yonder is the place of God touching humanity. And all that you have been through this morning, it is your opportunity to say, yes, God, I surrender in this morning. 
Because I understand that what I have been through and what I'm going through this morning is only my yonder. It's my preparation for your blessing this morning. Note it well. God do not bless helter skelter. Those who God bless, he take them apart. He bring them yonder. And he deals with them there. Yonder is a nice, not a nice place. When Nathan came to David, David could have resented Nathan. But David understood that what Nathan is saying to him, he has to surrender it all. And here is David in the 23rd Psalm. And we can quote the 23rd Psalm. Because David understands that yonder there will be trials. In the midst of my enemies. All of these things. The Lord has a table for you yonder. In your suffering, in your pain. The Lord has a table prepared for you. Yonder. Can you worship yonder this morning? Can you go a little further this morning, somebody? Yonder. What is your yonder this morning? I've taken my praise yonder. I have come to that understanding that I'm going to take my praise yonder. Not just remain here where I am comfortable, but I purpose this morning to take my praise yonder in my pain. In my disappointment, I am purposing to praise and worship. I said to you already, and I say it again, God will take every Christian yonder. But will every Christian worship there? God will take you yonder and the choice is each and every one of us. Each and every one of us will be tempted and tried. Because trials and testing are common to everybody. But who are they that are going to worship yonder? Are you going to take your praise yonder? Are you going to take your praise yonder? Are you going to take your praise in your workplaces where they say that you cannot call on that name? Are you going to take your prayers in your school, wherever you are? Because the call is to worship yonder. The call is to worship yonder. The Lord requires the church to worship yonder. The church has become comfortable and complacent. Worshiping here is a show for man. I'm not fooled by that. Worshiping in your comfort zone and in your comfort bubble, you can put on a show. But worshiping yonder is a sacrifice to God. What is worship this morning? What is worship? Have we worshiped lately? Have we offered something of what to God lately? Or are we still holding on? Are we still putting on our show this morning? Because worshiping here is a show for man because the call is to worship yonder. The call is to go into your workplaces, go into the highways, go into the byways, go into the nooks and the crannies, and worship the Lord. Do as he instructs you. Too long we have the concept that worship is singing and shouting. Worship is doing what the Lord asks of you this morning. So when I say go into the nooks and crannies, I'm not saying go there and sing a song. I'm saying just go there and do what the Lord asks of you to do this morning. That is your worship. That is your worship this morning. That is your worship. The church requires of us to go over yonder and worship this morning. In our difficult situation. A place on the altar. Place on the altar. What God is requiring from you this morning. So many of us are not receiving that which God has prepared for us. In the midst of our enemies. A table is prepared. In the midst of our very situation that is so discomforting, a table is prepared. But we are still feasting from the crumbs in Lodibar this morning. Are you in Lodibar this morning? When there is a seat at the king's table reserved for you this morning? Worshiping yonder is a privilege. Worshiping yonder is your deliverance. It's your liberation this morning. Only when you begin to worship yonder, you receive deliverance. Only when you begin to worship yonder, yonder that place where you said, it's not my will, I'm surrendering it all to you this morning. That is your liberation this morning. That is your deliverance this morning. Only when you get over yonder, you will not receive your deliverance here this morning. But when you go yonder, when you go yonder, 
There is a breaking and a making, a reshaping over yonder. And few Christians want to go yonder. Few Christians want to go yonder. Because yonder, the hands of God is always at work. The hands of God is always at work yonder. We do not want to go yonder because we want to hold on. The young man, the young man did not want to go yonder. Some of us, we behave like the young man this morning. We boast and we say all oh, that we have done for the Lord. And persons see us and they think that we are the most noble of Christians. But God is saying, you wretched servant. You can fool men, but you cannot fool me because what is required of you, you have not given it to me as yet. And here is the young man in his pompous, arrogant attitude. I have done this and I have done that and I have done that. But what is required was for him to go yonder. We could say all oh, that we want here. But when we get yonder, it's a different situation altogether. Can you take your worship yonder this morning? Can you take your worship to that place where what God is requiring of you is the very thing that you need? Where you must make a choice. A choice must be made yonder. We can play games in the church, but God will take us there. And some of you have been yonder, and you can testify this morning how the Lord break you. Some of us have been yonder where we have to give all, but we can testify that God has been faithful, Brother John, when we lay it down at the altar. Because yonder, God do not play games yonder. God do not play games yonder. When God takes you yonder, he takes you yonder for purpose. Anytime God takes you yonder, it's a privilege. Because what God does in taking us yonder is just giving us a cue as to what he's going to do for you. Ask Abraham to give his son because you know he wanted to give Abraham his son. Ask the woman of Zarephath to give the last cake, because he knew he wanted to give her eternal bread. Ask you to go through a moment of sickness and pain and trial, because he know he want to break that curse over your family, and he chose you this morning. Stop complaining, bear it. In faith, worship is an act of faith. Some of you might feel uncomfortable this morning. Because you may say, Brother Lindsay, I do not understand what you are saying. But I say it again. Bear it this morning. The pain and the disappointment. Because it's God who takes you there. And when he brings you to that meal and that molding process, deliverance is certain. And I'll tell you something about yonder this morning. Yonder is your liberation worship. Yonder is your liberation worship this morning. When you go yonder and you worship, you liberate not only yourself this morning, bear it, understand that. When God takes you yonder, you're not going yonder for yourself. You are going yonder for so many others this morning. And I can testify to that. Look at Abraham. He went yonder. He and Isaac alone. But the entire world have been blessed by Abraham. Look at Jesus in the wilderness this morning. Look at Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Oh, somebody bear your yonder this morning. Your children depends on you to worship yonder. Your community depends on you to worship yonder. Be faithful where you are this morning. The Lord will make a way for you. And deliverance will come your way. Stay faithful yonder. Stay faithful yonder. Yonder is your liberation worship. When you worship yonder, not only yourself is set free, but you're releasing something that will touch so many lives. You yourself will not even know how many lives you touch when you worship yonder. When you worship yonder, God never calls us to worship yonder for our only self. God called us yonder so that we can make a sacrifice for so many others this morning. Can I tell you that this morning, the very thing that you are refusing to let go, do it this morning and worship. 
set somebody free this morning. Your family, your children, your nation this morning. Yonder worship is powerful worship. The world may see you as being weak. When you bow your knees, you're crying out. The world may say, why, why? But yonder worship is a powerful worship. When you get to the place where you relent of everything that you consider important to you. Paul say, I count everything as dung. I count everything as money. Oh, for the excellency of God this morning. Yonder worship is powerful worship. When the church worship yonder, not when we come here and we just sing a few songs, but when each and every one of us enter yonder, there is power. There is power when we worship yonder, when we break our will this morning, when we surrender our will this morning. We can sing songs and have a good time, but there is no power. But when the church goes yonder and worship, Satan cannot stand it because the spirit takes control yonder. Yonder is the place where the spirit is evident. Not here, but yonder. 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 That place, yonder. The Lord has prepared for each and every one of us this morning. Yonder worship is powerful. Things happen there. Things happen there. Things happen yonder. When you worship yonder, that is where you receive your deliverance. That is where your breakthrough and your liberation comes. Worship him. Yonder, where it hurts you the most. Worship him. Where you are disappointed the most. Worship him this morning. Here is David. Psalms 23. It is God who takes us yonder. It is God who tempted Abraham. Had it not been in the Bible, you would have doubted me this morning, I'm certain. But it is God who takes his children yonder. Because going yonder is a place where God is requiring the best of us. Because God has already determined to give the best of himself to us. In your sickness this morning, in your brokenness and all the difficulties and pains that you are facing this morning, worship him yonder. Because he wants to give his best to you this morning. You will only get it over yonder. Not here in Lodiba. Not here in Lodiba. But yonder. Yonder. Yonder is a place of great exchange. Yonder is a place of great exchange. When you go yonder to worship, you can exchange it all. Because God is willing to make that exchange over yonder. Yonder. I think of that old rugged cross. It was yonder for Jesus. Yonder. Only what is sacrificed yonder. Only what is sacrificed yonder. Only the worship that is required of you will God honor this morning. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac caused God to give his own son to humanity. The woman at Zarephath gave a cake. God gave eternal oil and bread and all of it. Jacob gave up his name. And God gave him a new identity. All of that took place yonder. It was not in the ordinary this morning. And that is why so many Christians are having difficulties. That is why so many persons. Because we want to serve God in the ordinary. We want to serve God here. But David said there is a higher place. There is a higher place to dwell. The question is, do your soul knows that place this morning? It's called yonder. Until you get over yonder, you have no idea what true worship is this morning. Until you get over yonder, you have that worship. Worship only begins yonder. Until you worship yonder, the hands of God is withhold. And I want you to note it this morning. Until you worship yonder, the hands of God is withhold because yonder is the place of God's release this morning. Yonder is the place of God's release where he calls you to be broken. Where he requires of you to give up all that he wants you to give up. Until you worship yonder, 
the hands of God is withhold. God's bring you yonder. He did it. It's he that is doing it. He brings us yonder to prove your worthiness and to bless you. He brings you yonder to prove your worthiness this morning. Are you worthy this morning? Are you worthy this morning? Do you think you are worthy this morning? Ask yourself. Ask yourself if you have been yonder recently. He brings us yonder to prove God do not take you through all of this. And I grow to understand, Brother Philip, as I grow older in this Christian walk, the greater the testing and the greater the trials, the greater is the blessings of God. It must be because it is he that is doing it. I have learned to bear my pains and bear my cross, bear my suffering. I have a saying, and those of you who know me know it, I keep on saying it at my workplace. And I say, take what all you want, but just leave the crumbs for me because I understand. But the crumbs and Christ, I am well taken care of. Take it all. You don't have to fight and make any fuss with anybody because when you're at yonder, God's provision is certain. Here is yonder, the 23rd Psalms. Read it with a new understanding. Read it because the 23rd Psalm speaks of David yonder. In the midst of my enemy. Yonder. The enemy cannot stop the release of God yonder. The enemy cannot stop the release of God yonder. It may be withheld from you while you are here. But long as you enter into your yonder, it's certain to come. I encourage you to go yonder this morning. Yonder is a strange place. Yonder is a strange place. Yonder is an unfamiliar place. You don't know where your yonder is if God does not show it to you. You cannot determine your yonder this morning. You cannot determine your yonder this morning. It is only God that will show you where your yonder is. You might want that situation to be your yonder. But your yonder is prepared and designed by God. You do not know what it is. It's new. It's hostile. And often it is outside of our comfort zone. But that is the place God is calling us to worship this morning. Because worship must be sacrificial. You cannot worship empty handed. As long as you do not give up anything in worship, you have not worshipped. Worship is sacrificial. It must cost you something. And I know we have not worshipped in a long time. We leave this place too happy. Worship will break us. Worship Abraham. Think about it. Think about the woman at Zarephath. The last worship will cost something. It will cost you. God wants some worship beyond that this morning. God wants some worship beyond that this morning. He wants some worship in our schools. Our schools have become a dangerous and hostile place. For our children, yonder is a hostile place. And it's the church's responsibility to go yonder this morning. God wants worship yonder in the house of parliament and government. He wants worship. Even if it's outside protocol, God wants worship in our jobs. Even if it's high risk, He wants us to worship yonder. What are you going to do this morning? Are you going to negotiate? Are you going to strike a deal with God this morning? How dare you this morning? His words do not return to him void. The call is to worship yonder. God, I cannot do it this morning. They will fire me. That is when you are here. That is when you are here and that is where you want to worship. But there is no blessing for worshiping here. God is calling you yonder. Yonder. God is not protocol to call on the name of God in the house of parliament. Would you say that? God wants you to worship yonder. Over yonder. Yonder. Yonder in the schools, children. Those of you who go in secondary schools. God wants you to worship yonder. Yonder, yonder, yonder. Where is your yonder this morning? Yonder is a strange place. Christians got to set up altars in some strange places and worship God there. 
yonder this morning. We bring it home just now. Esteem the call to worship yonder as a privilege. Esteem it. Hold it. Consider it an honor to worship God yonder. In your pain this morning, in your trials, in your difficulties, consider it an honor. I think of the early Christian church and the sacrifice they made, but they all consider it an honor. They consider it a joy to be killed. It was the worship and the sacrifice over yonder. Consider it a privilege this morning. Because it is the spirit of God that calls and directs us to worship yonder. When you are called to go further this morning, it's not the flesh that is calling. It is the spirit of God. Go yonder. You hear it this morning, some of you. The Lord is speaking to you this morning to go yonder and worship. Do like Abraham. Go and erect your altar over there. Everybody can praise, but not everybody can worship because worship must be spiritual. Worship will not regard, have no regard for the desire of the flesh. Worship have no regard for the desire of the flesh. Worship doesn't care how important this child is to you. Worship only cares and regards the desire and the will of God. And as long as you're holding on to the desire of the flesh, you're not a true worshiper. You have not worshipped as yet. Worship requires and have no regard for fleshly desire. Worship doesn't care how important it is to you. Take your son and God rub it into Abraham. Because what God is rubbing into you or rubbing out of you, he is also rubbing something into you also. Rub it into Abraham, brother, tell his Lord. Take thy son, thy only son, the son that thou lovest, Look at how God's speaking to him. And go and sacrifice him. Worship have no regard for the flesh. God will ask us to do some strange things in these times. And it will take the true worshiper. The Bible says the time and the hour is now. When they that worship must worship in spirit and truth. Because yonder is here. Where God is calling. Calling us. The church is holding on. When the church has been called to give a worship over yonder. Worship is a sure sign of spiritual maturity. Not all Christians count it a privilege to say, nevertheless, nevertheless. God has not made a mistake this morning. God has not made a mistake this morning by taking you to a strange place and demanding a worship from you. Some of you are in a strange place this morning. You know where your strange place is. And God is demanding of you that you worship him right there. In the midst of your brokenness. In the midst of a divorce that you might be facing. In the midst of your bankruptcy. God is requiring from you just to lay down this morning and worship him. Because he already prepared a way out for you. Would you obey God this morning? In the midst of that difficulty. God bring you right at that moment. At the brink of a divorce. To save your marriage. And it is sung in as though it is a contradiction. But it is not a contradiction. Because the carnal mind cannot comprehend the spiritual. God bring you at financial ruins to prosper you. But the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of God this morning. God has brought you yonder. At that place where you are contemplating to kill quit. Give it all up. And he brought you right at the brink. Because God works in mysterious ways. At the brink of divorce. He is right there with a plan to give you the most wonderful marriage. At the brink of financial ruin. Right there he brings us yonder to bless us. Worship him there. Worship him there in your brokenness, in your loneliness this morning. Offer a praise this morning. With your last jar of oil and flour, worship him with it. Sacrifice it. Because that is where we differentiate those that are worthy to be called and numbered. And those that will receive what the Lord has prepared for them. When you reach yonder and you make that commitment 
and your purpose to worship him. Can you worship him yonder this morning? With what you are facing this morning, as bleak as it is this morning, as hard as it is this morning, the Lord is asking of you this morning. The Lord is demanding of you this morning. I worship yonder. He brought you there. It wasn't the devil that brought you there. But it was the hands of the Lord that break you, caused you to be lying on a bed this morning. Just to set your household free. Can you worship him this morning? Can you bow your heart this morning? Oh, I invite you right where you are this morning. As we bring it home. There is one more slide, but we just bring it home now. Right on this point. Because there is a call to worship yonder. Oh, just look at it this morning. Yes, you cannot express your emotions. But you know you are in your yonder moment. Somebody just worship him this morning. Because you are in that moment right now. And it is the hands of the Lord that has brought you right where you are. He knows how to squeeze you. He knows how to press you. And it was God that was squeezing you and pressing you to bring out of you a praise that is worthy of his blessing this morning. Oh, somebody, if you have been squeezed and pressed, let a praise arise from the inside this morning. If you have been squeezed and pressed, let a praise arise. From the inside this morning. The Lord has brought you thus far. The Lord has brought you thus far. Because he have a way out of the situation for you. He has brought you yonder. Can you worship him now this morning? Can you worship him now this morning?